morning everybody welcome to mortal gaming this is me again marvin and we're now here for another video for ragnarok origin and this time we're going to be talking about the guillotine cross or the gx this is going to be the guide that i'll be making for the gx but since we still don't know if any changes will be arriving on our global server then this guide might still be updated first and foremost thank you so much to sir japo for lending me his awesome character and we'll be talking about first the two builds of the gx the first one is the qatar build for the qatar build it has been predominant in the kr and taiwan server since it has a higher dps output and because of the totem as compared with the dagger so not only because the qatar has three slots already here as compared to us we still have it on two slots i still think that it is better because of the totem on level 60 of the totem your attack power will increase by 1.5 percent for each shadow point and considering that you can get up to 100 shadow points and you have the choice of you know using those shadow points or not then your physical attack will be increased by 150 percent so for example if you have 10,000 physical attack as of the moment you get up to 25,000 physical attack after your shadow points have been full so this is one of the reasons why a lot of people use Qatar build because you know 150% increase in your overall performance is a huge value added to your character. So in terms of stats of the Qatar build, I'm recommending 99 on strength, then 99 on luck, and then the rest would be either vitality or dexterity since dexterity also increases your close range or melee attack. So it's still okay, but if you're going for PvP, of course, more HP is better. So Vitality is the one to go. Now, for the skill builds of the Qatar type, all right, all of the Qatar skills that you would need, you can max it out and still, you know, use only 40 skill points. 10 on Cycle Cross, 5 on Cycle Blade, 10 on Dark Claw, 1 on Dark Burst, 10 on phantoms dance one on qatar mastery and one on each of the wind walk quick retreat and weapon blocking okay to quickly explain all of this so cycle cross is going to be the spammable skill thanks to the qatar mastery you can reduce the cooldown of other skills by one second every time that you use cycle cross or the rolling cross slash in the Taiwan server. So that is one of the reasons why most of the skills of the GX can be also spammable and you can easily put it on your auto setting. Now, the second one is the cycle blade. This is the cyclone. So this is an AOE melee skill. And the next one is the dark law. This is the initiating skill of the gx since it also amplifies your succeeding damage to the enemy that's why it's a dash skill so that's the first skill that you're always gonna use okay the dark burst use 100 points on your shadow points and summon a shadow this is really good in terms of pve but not that usable on uh, pvp since the shadow is immobile so it can easily be dodged that's the reason why you won't be using your 100 points of shadow points on pvp and still benefit from it by adding 150 percent on your physical attack so on pve mvp dungeons this is still better since most of the mvps or bosses out there won't be moving that much so whenever you use your dark burst you summon a shadow clone that does every skill and every attack that you do activating the shadow clone would upgrade all of your current skills making them look purple and have an increased damage okay so aside from that you have this wind walk so that you could uh, rush towards a target 
you could retreat when you need to and you can block enemies damage if your retreat is on cooldown all right so that is for the Qatar build let's now go to the dagger build so for the dagger build you now need agility here so strength and agility are the key points here i would suggest for you to go and pump those up but only up to 500 percent attack speed on your agility if you already have achieved 500 percent attack speed you don't need to put any points on your agility since you know flea doesn't have that much value in this game and i would rather have you put it on luck now for the skills same as the qatar build when you put your skill points on the dagger build you would only need up to 39 skill points so you have one extra skill point to put on any other on your skill tree so 10 on this cross slash 10 on suppress poison 5 on toxin storm 10 on toxin transmission 1 on each of this uh, mobility skills but you have to choose only one between lethal poison explosion and deadly poison stack so in my opinion deadly poison stack is the one to go because this one doesn't stack it only inflicts additional damage whenever you stack again on the enemy as compared with the deadly poison stack this one stacks up to 10 times on the poison damage on the enemy so if you're gonna be asking me which one of the two is going to have an impact i would say by just a little because of the totem go for qatar since first it's much more achievable to only invest on one weapon the second is the size penalty the size penalty of the qatar on medium is 100 percent and on large it's 75 percent as compared with the dagger on medium it's just 75 percent on medium and 50 percent on large monsters so most of the time you would need either the drake card or a weapon perfection buff so let's now go for the gears but this time we're going to focus on the qatar okay so for the weapon it's gonna be battle blade Battle Blade is released here on level 110, but I do believe that it's gonna be released earlier on our global server since aside from the specialized uh, Qatar for the Guillotine Cross, which is the Gladiator Qatar, I think that the Battle Blade is the best one to go because this inflicts bleed on the enemy and at the same time, every crit that you have beyond 100 would be added to your crit damage and believe me that is a lot of increased damage imagine you can get you know most people have around 200 crit already and it's easily achievable with the qatar so that's additional 100 percent crit damage already on your character as compared with the gladiator qatar this one only increases the damage of your dark burst or the shadow clone but if you don't have it or it's on cooldown it's not gonna be of value added to your character as compared with this one it's gonna be adding on every skill of your character so i'd rather go for the battle plate so for the armor gears we would now get the charleston's set instead of the tier set because this directly increases your physical damage for every 20 strength that you have and that is a lot already aside from the fact that it also makes you tankier and also brings out more damage to your character so for the accessories it's gonna be the paranoid of dark knight or the dark knight set it's here so the medal and the gloves that is for the level 95 accessory for the level 105 accessory is going to be sig to Lifa's set that is co a combination of the medal and the wings okay i think this is it sig to Lifa and this one so both on physical attack now for the accessory wares again i will be basing this on our current wishing gachas that have been released so the first one is for the headgear it's gonna be white lily 
For the face gear, it's gonna be stylish glasses. For mouth gear, it's still gray mask. For the back wear, it's going to be the nightly emblem since the nightly emblem makes you deal more damage to bleeding targets and since the battle blade inflicts bleed on your enemies then that is going to be the best back gear in my opinion for the costume of course it's still floral elf for increased melee physical damage now for the enchants the enchants on weapon and accessories since you are needing a lot of crit so that you could increase your crit damage of course it's gonna be superior crit for the armor it's gonna be pve technique and counter crit for pvp now for the garment it's gonna be anti-magic damage for shoes it's anti-physical damage for headwear backwear it's going to be superior physical attack and pvp technique for pvp for headwear and mouthwear that's pve technique for pve and improved physical defense for pvp costume it's gonna be pve technique for pve and pvp technique for pvp okay next refines of course you need plus 18 on your weapon next plus 15 accessories and then next plus 15 armor set now for the cards of course, for your weapon, it's still going to be damage modification cards uh, with the your priority being size, the next race, and then element. For armor gears, Cornutus card and elemental cards for PvP. For accessories, the first priority is the Aether Orc Archer since the Aether Orc Archer makes your character release double strafe every time that your character crits. So for every skill that you deal crit, and since your character will crit all of the time, then you release double strafe every 0.5 seconds. So that is a huge increase in your DPS. So one either Orc Archer card, then one Greatest General, one Kobold, and one Albaron, or you can go for Osiris on PvP. For the headgear, Maya Purple, so that you won't be casting uh, site anymore and Marduk for PvE or G Earth. Now for the divine traits, ignore physical defense, PvP damage bonus, and physical attack. For the armor and garment, it's both PvP damage reduction, P physical defense, HP percentage, and PvE damage reduction. For shield, it's going to be physical defense, magic defense, physical damage reduction, and HP. For shoes, it's going to be movement speed, physical defense, HP percentage, and physical damage reduction. For the sigils, it's always better for you to have a sword. So descending sword or divine sword. For the passive, it's going to be impaled for the high tier players. And for PvE, weakness gaze is. But on MVP, it's not going to be advisable. So for overall PvE, Meteor, Bloodlust, Berserk, and Immortal Body. For PvP, it's now important for you to attach Endless Nightmare and Gate of Suffering on your character since you have a lot of stack of physical attack on your character and the damage over time on the enemy is based on your physical attack right and magical attack so this would inflict greater damage on the enemy that is being hit then to add to that immortal body and swift break out so i also put this four because this four also increases pvp damage reduction now let's go to the cog wheels for the Cogwheels, a lot of Vero scores are still usable on the Guillotine Cross. So the first one here is Blade of Balance so that you could increase the damage on your Qatar. Then next would be Corrosive Poison because you still would want to use Enchant Poison and Deadly Enchant Poison. And then together with that, the uh, Poison Boost and Core Overload. And last would be the Holy Light Shield. For the Matrix and Nexus engine, this time you would now be needing the Phantom Slash, okay? When you do the Phantom Dance, you become invincible and you deal 100% additional damage to the enemies 
with uh, less than 80% HP. And then next would be the Cyclone Power, which increases the damage of your Cycle Blade and increases it again by 25% for each cycle of the blade. And then next, the Shadows Counter Attack. Whenever you use Quick Retreat, you get into hiding and you get increased speed, etc. So it's gonna be better for your mobility. Now for the dagger build, we will be uploading another guide. So that's it. I do hope that this video has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. If you happen to like this video, please do leave a like. Share this to your friends and click that bell notification button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Start a new stream or a new content. That's it. See you again on the next video. Bye-bye.